on desk duty for punching a guy he saw me with. And back at the station house, the protesters are still protesting the death of Jamal Jones. Officer Craig Newell was attacked by a black guy with a baseball bat, and Newell's partner, Brad Ulrich, took a swing at a fellow officer, Bruce Taylor. But back to Zane, my one and lonely. He's trying to prove his father is innocent of murdering his mother. Zane was able to convince a lawyer to talk with his dad. She still hasn't agreed to take the case, but my little bunny boy can be very convincing. What do you got? Nothing. With you, nothing is always something. It's a schedule for the sergeant's exam classes. All right. You're taking a class to prepare for the sergeant's exam? Yeah. So trying to make sergeant, that's no joke. I mean, you're serious about climbing the NYPD corporate ladder. Do you listen when I talk to you? 92% of the time. Here. You missed file these files. How do you know it was me? How long have you been on modified duty, Marinelli? Six days, seven hours, and two and one half minutes, Miniver. Yeah, well, for six days, seven hours, and two and one half minutes, we've had lost files, mixed up phone calls, and lousy coffee. You're gonna miss my French roast when I'm gone. Call Vanessa. Uh, Who's Vanessa? Nobody. No, but with you, nobody is always somebody, especially when the name's Vanessa. Ah, she's a lawyer. I'm hoping to look into my father's case. Your lawyer's name's Vanessa? Vanessa Sharp. Vanessa Sharp? Why does that sound familiar? Is she the one... the defense attorney that cross-examined you in the Knowles trial? Uh, I wouldn't say cross-examined. I say shredded it. She made you look like a drooling idiot. Of course, how hard is that? We're going to the prison to talk to my dad. When she hears his side of the story, she'll know there's no way he murdered my mother. Hey, Aura, right, how's Noel? Doctor still won't say when he can leave the hospital. He's gonna pull through, right? Yeah, they just gotta keep him under observation. Any leads on a suspect? No print hits off the baseball bat, no cooperating witnesses, no nothing. If you get a chance, you should go see him. It'd mean a lot to Craig seeing some of the guys. Yeah, we're planning to. You know, seeing your partner lying there in a hospital bed makes you see things differently. You think the badge protects you? It doesn't. We're all alone out there. Marinelli, Captain Schmidt wants to see you right away. What about? That detective from Internal Affairs has been in his office for 20 minutes talking about you. Jesus. Maybe this is good news. It's the IAB since one of the handing out good news. I'm just trying to make you feel better. Captain, come in. Close the door, sir. Hello, Detective Harris. Officer Marinelli. So here's one from the Book of the Weird. The uh, civilian you assaulted, this Rick Jansen, he uh, dropped the complaint. Huh. So in light of that, IB has decided you can get back to active duty. You'll get docked 10 vacation days, plus a GO-15 notation goes in your file. 10 days? You wanted more? I get 10 days in addition of the seven and a half days that I've been stuck behind that desk? That's an attitude I'm picking up, is it, Officer Marinelli? No, ma'am. I guess we're done here. Hopefully we won't cross paths anytime soon. Try and stay away from office for the rest of the month. And it might also help to steer clear of that ex-girlfriend. What's her name? Beatrice? Steering clear, sir. Wide berth. Dismissed. You want to call me ma'am again? I'll deck you. The first sergeant's exam class is tonight, so no, I can't meet the photographer. Elizabeth, do it with him. If I saw the photos he took of other people's weddings, how different can ours be? <clears throat> so what if I don't like his personality? I'm not marrying the photographer, I'm marrying mm -hmm. you. Yeah, I gotta go too. I'm back on duty. Beatrice's asshole boyfriend dropped the charges. They let you off scot-free? No, they docked me 10 days vacation plus a GO-15 notation. That stays on your file permanently. Ten days vacation, what does that work out to be dollar-wise? About 1300 bucks. Damn.
While there's no leads yet on finding the person that beat Officer Newell, the investigation is ongoing. Any tips that come in off the street, any tips that are called in are to be taken seriously and referred to the detectives in charge. I'd also like to remind everyone that despite the tension that we are all under, personal misunderstandings are to be worked out on your own time. Getting physical in the station house while in uniform will not be tolerated. Won't happen again, sir. I'm glad to hear that. Newell being in the hospital, I guess I just lost it. It was all on me. I'm sorry. Yeah, me too. In conclusion, we have to arrest this pigeon killer, if for no reason other than to squash the growing perception that the entire NYPD is being outwitted by a lone nut with a dart gun. Let's roll. <laughs> Hello, Mike. Zane's not around. That's okay. I want to talk to you. To me? Well, I keep leaving Zane messages. He never calls me back. This surprises you? Hey, what are you doing? But well, I got Rick to drop the charges. Cut it out. Do you think Zane's mad at me? Yeah, I think Zane is mad at you. But he's not stealing a bunch about his guitar, is I he? I think the guitar is only a small part. Because of I apologized about the guitar. Look, Beatrice, you guys had a thing going, then you burned down his apartment. The next night, he tells you he loves you. You say you're leaving town, and then suddenly you show up with another guy. All that can make a fella testy. So he still loves me. I didn't say that. What are you saying? Beatrice, it's none of my business, but maybe you're spending too much time thinking about Zane. You got a life, right? Other things you could do, friends. Maybe it'd be better if you did some other stuff for a while, some non-Zane stuff. Like what? I don't know. Get a job? Oh. OK. I understand. You understand what, exactly? You're sweet. I'm happy we had this little chat. Beatrice. I feel better. Beatrice? In all her glory. Well, what's she doing here? I convinced her to leave you alone, I think. And what exactly did she say? I don't remember exactly what she said. Oh, now all of a sudden you got Alzheimer's? You just talked to her two seconds ago. She's upset that you're upset with her. Oh, is that right? No weapons, no drugs. Did you talk to my brother Steve yet? No. He has a witness who saw Beatrice leave your place just before the fire. Steve doesn't know that the witness saw Beatrice. Do you think Steve's just gonna let this thing go? He's a fire marshal. It's his job to catch arsonists. And I don't want to be in the middle. Then don't be, Mike. Hey, look at this guy. What? Fits the description of the guy who attacked Newell. He's got threads and he's wearing Tommy Hilfiger. You think that's the guy? I don't know. Let's talk to him. Pull over. Excuse me, sir. Got the... Hey! He's gone, Mike! What'd I tell you? Mike! What the hell are you running from, huh? It's hey, Don't hurt! What are you running from? Uh, what were you doing last Friday afternoon? I was at home with my son. Hey, hey! Keep your hand up where I can see you. That's what I said. You can call my wife and ask her. She'll tell you. I was at home with my son. And what are you running from? What? This? All right, get out of here. Mom, I'm too busy to go shopping for a wedding dress. Of course you are. That doesn't change the fact that you need something fabulous to wear when you walk down the aisle. Well, Assuming you're having an aisle. Well, I'll, I'll wear your wedding dress. Which one? The one from your marriage to Dad. Actually, oh, that'd be bad luck. All right, I'll wear the one from your marriage to Hal. Bad form. That's like you wearing the dress Eleanor wore when she married your father. Besides, I know my daughter. You won't be satisfied until we find the perfect dress. Your perfect dress. Um, the perfect dress doesn't exist. It's like this myth that's been perpetuated by bridal magazines and magic wedding Barbie dolls. 
You're being married in two months. You should have chosen something a year ago. A year ago, Mike and I were on our second date. How's one o'clock tomorrow? I have to go to the dentist. You can floss in the cab on the way. I made an appointment. Eleanor's joining us. Well, I think I might have a cavity. The dinner at my mother's last night. She's driving me crazy. You think nobody in the family ever got married? And my brother. He's trying to convince me we should go out on my uncle's boat for the bachelor party. Never mind, I get sick as a dog just standing on the dock. Doesn't the best man play in the bachelor party? He does. Am I the best man? You are. Then why is your brother making plans? I haven't told Steve yet he's not the best man. Well, tell him, because the bachelor party of the century is not going to be on your Uncle Connie sports fisherman. Any boats involved aren't going to be bobbing up and down in Howard Beach. We get on a boat, we're going someplace exotic. How exotic? Well, there's this little island off the coast of Mexico. Mexico? Where they film X-rated movies on a yacht. And we can book the yacht for four days, meals included. And we're on the yacht while they're filming the porno? Exactly. Get a little sun, do a little fishing, mingle with the stars, maybe rub a little cocoa butter on their booties. Uh -huh. I've been researching other options. We could go shark hunting in Antigua, dog sledding in Alaska. We could shoot down the rapids in the middle of the Grand Canyon in a rubber raft blindfolded, in the dark. Well, I'm taking my responsibilities seriously. This is your bachelor party. Would you think I was gonna buy you a beer and drop you off at Billy's Topless? Ah. 12 Zebra, respond to a 1052. Dispute in progress. Captain Deli, 205 Houston at Ludlow. You go snowmobiling in the Rockies. Have you ever been on a snowmobile? No, but it's like riding a motorcycle except in snow. You and me zipping along the continental divide? Whipped by sub-zero windshield while at the same time defying death? No, that's the pickaxe snowshoe ice climbing tour. Ice climbing tour? Yeah, straight up an 11,000 foot frozen waterfall. I'm not a big fan of frostbite. What have you got below the timberland? Well, there's a world championship barbecue contest in Memphis. All you can eat pork products. Huh. And the Montana Testicle Festival. The Montana Testicle Festival? No. My cook is forking my head waiter. What the hell are you talking about? He's forking him in the leg. He said forking, right? Oh, stop it. Stop it. That's not a scratch. Look, you did this is purpose. This is an indentation of my leg. Hey, this is Hey. It was an accident. He stabbed me in the leg with a coughing fork. That was no accident. Sir, put the fork down. Put it down. My hand slipped. He used a jabbing motion. How is that an accident? He uses a jabbing motion. There was no jabbing motion. I felt a jabbing motion, a jabbing motion, and a twisting motion. I was trying to pull the fork out of your leg, you whiny bastard. Ah! Now you know how it feels. Put the fork down, Pete. I'm going to kill you. Jeez, oh, drop the knife. Look at him. You still think it knife. was an accident? Shut up. I said drop the goddamn knife now. Assault with a fork. Is that a misdemeanor or a felony? I don't know. Assault with a spoon is definitely a misdemeanor. A fork, I don't know. Why you gotta be so compulsive with that memo book? I make my entries while they're still fresh in my head. You should be filling out yours. I'll do it later. How are you gonna remember the day if you wait till later? I'll copy yours. I'll see you at the ER. Hey, I'll get a rookie to babysit so we can go visit Newell while we're there. <gasps> now? We're gonna be there now. We should go now. Mike, I'm no good in hospitals. I, I, I can't make that sick bed small talk. This is Newell we're talking about, not your great uncle Walter. Hey guys, come here. How you doing, no? Uh, feel better than I look. I'm ready to get out of here. Yeah. But you, you feeling okay? Athletic. Yeah. I bet. Do you need anything? We could maybe grab something from the cafeteria. Come on, sit down. Just you guys being here means a lot. You should have been here earlier. Uh, there were a lot of people here the first couple of days. Even the mayor stopped by. Yeah, that's worth getting your head cracked open for, huh? <laughs> nice bedside visit from the mayor. <laughs> I guess uh, novelty's you know, worn off. Slowed down the last few days. Except for the wife. Brad, Brad's been here every day. He's your partner. He ought to be here, right? Yeah. I know some of the guys in the forest they think I deserve this. You know, like Bruce Taylor. I'm sure he's thinking that. Nobody's saying that. Nah. I'm thinking that Brad and I both deserved it. But 
it's not true. Of course not. Whoever it was, it jumped me. Almost killed me. He couldn't have known. But he got the right guy. What are you talking about? The black kid. Died in the holding cell, Jamal Jones. I was the one to put the chokehold on him. <laughs> Brad didn't do anything wrong. He's been covering for me. What do you mean, covering for you? Now, the IAB cleared you guys, okay? Jamal Jones died of a heart attack. I didn't say that I killed him. All I'm saying is that I did put the chokehold on him. But he was breathing when we left him in the cell. You know what? You're, you're sick. You got hurt, and you're not thinking right now. Jones was fighting back hard. Son of a bitch took a swing at me. I had to use a chokehold on him. But it was me, not Brad. I don't want you guys thinking that it's on him, me being in that hospital bed. Jesus, man. I gotta go. He's not going to IAB, is he? No, of course not. I gotta go. Yeah, thanks for coming in. Hospital room. We both heard the story. Yeah, and? One of us tells a different version, makes the other a liar. If I'm asked, I'm gonna tell what I heard. How about you? IAB's investigation is over. That's your answer? It's not gonna come up, Mike. Club Zebra, respond to a 1024. Sexual assault, 38th room. Central, this is 12 Zebra. Shaw's responding to that job. Mike, even if Newell did use an illegal chokehold, that guy still had cocaine in his system, he had a congenital heart defect, and he has a history of heart problems. Problems which could have been made worse by his being put in a chokehold. The Emmy ruled that Jamal Jones died of a heart attack. That's official. Official. Central, this is 12 Zebra. We need a bus and a female officer to respond to 38 Broom. Uh, I live next door. I was coming home, saw the guy leaving her apartment. Alice was lying on the bathroom floor. I left her clothes where they were. I didn't move anything. I thought that... No, you did right. What happens now? There's an ambulance coming. Take her to the hospital. Um, Miss, I need to take a shower. Yes. Um, hey. Would you mind if we asked you to just sit tight for a little while till the ambulance got here? Alice! That's her husband, Peter. I called him at work. Alice, Jesus Christ. Can you get him out, out of here? Annette called me. I need a minute, please. Could you step outside just for a moment, sir? For a moment. I don't want him looking at me. Is she all right? She's going to be all right. Jesus Christ. How's this happen? She doesn't need me? I'm sure she does. You don't happen to have a cigarette, do you? No. I want to see my wife. go through this whole thing again with a whole new set of cops? Well, uh, the Texas from Special Victims Unit are going to take over the case from here. They're on their way now. Probably can't smoke here, huh? Don't think so. I'll tell my wife I'll be right outside. Hi. Elizabeth. What's up? I got an ambulance coming in. I just wanted to say hello. What? White male, 25, multiple stab wounds to the chest. Respiration 32. I'll call you later. Okay. Plasma stat. Job isn't tough enough. We gotta run this gauntlet every day? Right. I got one question for you. Are you gonna be in a better mood tomorrow? It's these sergeants' exam classes. What about them? First class is tonight. And you had that dream where you uh, show up for your first class and you're wearing just your boxers and socks? They only give the sergeants' exam once every three years. Yes, yeah, so? So. Even though I'm two years ahead of making sergeant now, time-wise, it's deceptive, because 
If I don't pass this time, three years from now, when I take the exam again, I'm going to be a year behind. You know, with that kind of logic, you deserve to be a sergeant. You always got to make a crack. No, not always. Because if you got a problem with me taking the sergeant's exam, I wish you had the balls to say you got a problem. I don't have a problem. You want to ride? Uh, I'm going to walk, clear my head. Hey, what Newell said, if I'm asked, I'm going to tell what I know. What if we're not asked? I got to go see my dad. We're talking to the lawyer later. Hey, did, did you see me put my memo book in my locker? I don't know. Why? I can't remember if I did or not. I'm sure you did, right? Yeah, I'm sure I did. The whole thing was like a dream. I didn't understand what was going on. My mom was dead. My father had been arrested. I didn't see my father after that, except for on TV. The uh, press dubbed it the Thanksgiving Day Massacre. Uh -huh. uh, my grandmother got custody, and uh, we weren't allowed to visit here. So the first time I came, I was 19. I didn't tell anybody, especially not my grandmother. The hardest part is, is, you know, always being separated by glass. You know, I haven't touched my own father in 24 years. Well, that's a great thing about retaining a hot shot attorney. I'm not drinking. I'm with my brother. I don't know exactly what time I'm going to be home. That's why I'm calling you now. I got to go, too. Elizabeth says hello. How is she? So in love with me, you wouldn't believe. Darcy and I broke up like six times when we were planning our wedding. Elizabeth and I will be OK. What are you going to have, Boyle? Club soda. Club soda? Something I gotta do later. Oh, yeah, sure, okay. Hey, make that a bourbon. Club soda, bourbon? Bourbon neat. Zane hasn't gotten back to me about my witness in his apartment fire. He's been pretty jammed up at work. Yeah, well, he's jamming me up. I got bosses of my own to report to. They want to know the status of the investigation. I'm sure he'll find it. You got something on your mind? What do you mean? You don't usually call me out of the blue to have a drink. I just figured. Well, yeah, actually. It's about the wedding. About the wedding party. Yeah? Yeah. The thing is, I wanted to ask you to be in, in the wedding party. I mean, if you want to. Why wouldn't I want to be in the wedding party? I just wanted to ask, you know, officially, if you wanted to be a groomsman. Of course I do. That's great. That's really great. So I've got, I got Zane lined up as my best man, and... Uh, Cousin Brendan, probably Joey and Ray. Your cop buddies. That's right. Yeah, sounds good. I thought you were thinking you'd be the best. Nah, I wasn't thinking that. You weren't? Well, when it sort of came up the other day, I figured that you, you had somebody else. Well, I, I should have said something earlier. It's all right, Mike, really. You're pissed. <laughs> I'm not. OK, I'm going to take you at your word, then. Don't take me at my word. Remember that afternoon with the raisin bread? Raisin bread. You were about 12, I was 14. You got the last two slices of raisin bread. You put them in the toaster. You were dancing around laughing at me. Ah, that raisin bread. So I, I waited while you toasted them, buttered them. And then uh, before you could get a bite, I grabbed the plate. And I chased you through the house. I went out the bathroom window onto the roof and sat there, ate your toast while you were screaming your lungs out. <laughs> Till Dad came out of the bedroom. Threatened us with his belt. Yeah. Jeez, he was pissed off. The Henninger Warehouse fire was the next night. No, that that was like two weeks later. Wow. It was the next night. Because I, I remember thinking the last time we spent any time with him, he was yelling at us. Dad really wanted both of us to be firefighters, you know? I felt like... I let him down the day you became a cop. You let him down? I don't know if I had been a better big brother when we were growing up. You were a great big brother. Well, if I was such a great big brother, how come I'm not your best man? Steve 
Christ, I knew. <laughs> what an asshole. Oh, man, you are so easy. <laughs> what an asshole. I know who you are, Miss Sharp. Uh, I, I seen you on court TV. You got Soboleski off. He was innocent. I always thought the guilt or innocence didn't matter to high-priced lawyers like you. Your son thinks it's important I hear your side of the story. I asked you not to help me. This is you not helping. She's good. When have we been able to talk like this? No glass between us. What are you paying her? I haven't agreed to take the case. But she will. Why don't you tell me what happened that night, Mr. Marinelli? Well, whether it matters to you or not, I am innocent. That night, things were tense. We were arguing over our plans for Thanksgiving Day, and we were supposed to spend the holiday at home, you know, just the four of us. But Natalie changed her mind. I wanted to go to her parents' house, which didn't appeal to me because her family never liked me. You married? No. I got pissed off. I told her I was going to spend the night at my brother Dave's. I went to a bar instead. I had three, maybe four whiskeys, watched a basketball game, bullets, bucks, back when they were respectable teams. I was a little drunk, but not sloppy. You drink? On occasion. I was feeling real frustrated. So I went to the John. I slammed my fist into the metal towel dispenser. That's where I got the bruises on my knuckles, in case you heard otherwise. I decided to go home, make peace. Once I got there, I checked on the kids. I tried to do it in my bedroom, it was locked. Well, Natalie do that once in a while as a way of telling me we were still fighting. I knocked, but no answer. I called, still nothing. So I figured she popped a couple of her sedatives. No waking her then, so I went to sleep on the couch. What time did you wake up? 6.30. I got nervous the kids would come down wonder why I wasn't sleeping in my own room. So I cleaned up and made a pot of coffee. Took a mug to Natalie. The door was open now. Figured she was awake. She was on the bed. Naked, eyes open. Didn't look like she was breathing. There was some blood on the sheets. Not a lot, but definitely blood. I tried to wake her. I shook her. I slapped her. No response. I didn't want the kids to see what was going on. I did CPR, trying with all my might to get her to breathe again. Nothing I did work, so I called the paramedics and waited. I guess I knew by then that she was dead. Why'd you put her in clean pajamas? My wife was a very private person. I knew she'd be embarrassed, strangers finding her naked. I thank God that McGann and Jane slept through the whole thing. He didn't want us to see our mother like that, right? Every commanding officer or his counterpart within the department is designated as the official liaison officer for the purpose of tracking and expediting requests for records from the document production unit of the legal bureau. Commanding officers or their counterparts may delegate the gathering of these records to subordinates. They are responsible for their command's compliance for all requests for records from the document production unit of the legal bureau. Any questions? Zane. Morning. Are you stalking me? How'd you know where I live? I'm a cop. Uh, I brought you coffee. Just give milk one equal. Thanks. I'm on my way to court. Oh, yeah? Do you mind if I walk along? Do I have a choice? You ever watch cable? Oh. No, I don't usually watch TV. Oh, uh, yeah, sometimes I'm flipping through the channels. I'll see something on cable. Uh -huh. Oh, last night there's this program. <clears throat> a typical American has a one in two chance of being diagnosed with a serious mental disorder in their lifetime. <laughs> they also said there's a one in 50 chance that your doctor is an imposter, which means that you have a one in 50 chance that your one in two chance of being diagnosed with a mental illness is by a quack. Zane, <laughs> were you uh, waiting at my building to tell me about what you saw on cable last night? No. OK. I was waiting outside your building to beg you to take my father's case. Only I'm not so good at begging. I mean, whining I got down, but not begging. You don't have to do this. Please take his case. I mean, I'll, I'll pay you anything. I'll do anything. He needs you. I need you. All right. I'll take the case. What? 
I said, I'll take the case. You will? Yes. It was a coffee, right? Or was it my begging? A little bit of both. I hate it. Oh, it's sweet. I hate sweet. It's adorable. I hate adorable even more than I hate sweet. All brides go through torture finding a dress. Mom, I am, I am not some airheaded 22-year-old who can't make a simple decision about the most important dress of her life. Well, how about something more like the Versace I wore to the wedding to your father? You mean sexy? Exactly. I don't want to look sexy. Of course, of course you, you do! do. Oh. Okay, can you two ever act like a normal current wife and ex-wife and disagree at least some of the time? How about this one? Oh, that's very sophisticated. I don't want sophisticated. She doesn't want sophisticated, she doesn't want sweet, she doesn't want sexy. What do you want? I don't know, I just... I don't want to look like a bride. She's gonna cry. Try and think where you left it last. If I remembered where I had it last, I wouldn't have lost it. You can't lose your memo book, Mike, it just doesn't happen. Hey, guess who we got here? The pigeon killer. This guy's the pigeon killer? Bought him right-handed. Doing the city a service. I'm a hero. You're gonna rest, will you? Hey, what's going on? Witnesses were on the corner when Craig got beaten. Detectives are re-interviewing them all again. Anybody talking? I've never seen so many deaf, dumb, and blind brothers. Let's get back to work, officers. Corrigan. Yes, sir. Did I get you completed memo book for this month yet? I'll get it to you. I'm a hero. I'm a goddamn hero. I'm screwed. I don't have a complete memo book to turn in. Nicarella's gonna grind me six ways to Sunday. I asked Aval, nobody's seen it. Probably left the damn thing at the sergeant's exam class. Mike, you're taking the sergeant's exam? Thanks. What, it's a secret? Everything's a secret with this guy. Zane told me last week. Yeah, Mike, why the hell are you taking the sergeant's exam? Because he doesn't want to end up like the two of you. Living from paycheck to paycheck, padding your overtime, overweight, flat-footed and disillusioned. You're implying there's something wrong with overweight, flat-footed and disillusioned? I'm gonna eat my gun. Mike, relax. I can get you a new memo book. Yeah, but if you don't hand in a completed book, you don't get a new book. Not through official channels, no. You got unofficial channels? I know a guy who knows a girl who knows a guy who happened to find a couple of boxes of NYPD stationery supplies. What does he have? He's got everything. He's got he's got more for him. He's got payroll cards. He's got summons books, memo books. Everything. Mike, you should talk to this guy. It's better than getting a notation on your file for losing a memo book. You want to make sergeant, that don't look too good. The three of you, you guys get together, it's like you lose brain cells. Drinks? Yeah. I gotta go. Wedding pressures. Yeah, but I didn't go through that. Uh, just get him a transvestite, it'll be fine. <laughs> you get him a dominatrix. Yeah. Hi, Joey. Ray. Hi, Zane. Beatrice. We were just leaving. We'll see you. Yeah. Wait. I have some great news. What happened to you? What do you want? What happened to your hair? What do you mean? It's all one color. I broke up with Rick. Congratulations. Well, Mike told me you still love me. Huh? You still love me. Look, Beatrice, it's not like that I'm ungrateful that you got Rick to drop the charges against me, because I am, but I... I Wait, I... that's not the great part. The great part is this. I'm going back to school. You're going back to school? To get a job. A career. What school are you going to? NYU? Columbia? American Academy of Funeral Science. Funeral Science? Mortician school. After talking to Mike, I saw my entire life with real clarity mike told you to go to mortician school i'm going to be an undertaker an ambassador between this world and the next an undertaker with the aging baby boomer population studies predict that the annual mortality rate will rise 20 percent each year so death is a real growth industry i have my first class tomorrow methodology of embalming wish me luck Oh, Zane, I, I want you to know I fully adjusted to my new medication. Oh. So, well, any lapses in judgment that were caused by the old medication, well, 
There's no chance of those lapses happening again in the future. Okay, great. Well, it's nice seeing you. You too. Okay, I'll see you. You know, when I clean the apartment, I usually put things back in the drawers. Hey! Hey! What? What are you looking for? I can't find my memo book. That's bad, right? Yeah, that's bad. And I fell asleep in the sergeant's exam class last night. Well, I fall asleep in biochemistry all the time. No, you don't. <laughs> well, not all the time. You're under a lot of stress. You got the wedding, the job. You don't have to be perfect all the time. I'm hearing this from you? Yeah, right? <laughs> like you need advice from the girl who spent the entire afternoon crying in the middle of a pile of tool. Tool? Uh, I went shopping for a wedding dress with my mother and Eleanor. I had a tantrum. <laughs> I broke down in tears. It was beautiful. Paint me impressed. Yeah, let's see how impressed you are when the bride comes down the aisle in a tank top and jeans. Do you want me to go with you? Looking for a wedding dress? I know it's against the rules. Well, it completely flies in the face of tradition, which is why it's such a great idea. <laughs> the hell with tradition. How do you feel about uh, a big, fluffy dress? I was kind of looking forward to one of those. We'll see. <laughs> and, and, and one of those uh, garter thingamajiggies that go under the big, fluffy dress? I was sort of hoping for one of those, too. Yeah, I bet you were. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> Hey, Zane. I figured I'd catch up to you eventually. Yeah, I was going to call you. Uh-huh. I got uh, jammed up at work. Yeah, that's what Mike said. Hey, Uncle Connie. What are you doing in the bar two nights in a row? I can't be in the bar two nights in a row. Mike's in here every night. You getting a divorce? No. Yes, I can hear you and Darcy getting a divorce. We're not getting divorced. Can I get a beer? Want to sit down? Yeah, all right. I have a witness that says he saw a young woman coming from the direction of uh, your building the night of the fire. Yeah? This witness describes the young woman as kind of corn-fed, prepubescent Japanese porn star. What? I'm not getting divorced. You leave that sweet lady, I break both your legs. Date a lot of different women? Not really, not a lot. Not a lot. So the women you go out with, you pretty much would remember what they look like. If you're dating a woman who's an arsonist, she could set something else on fire. For this particular arsonist, this could be a one-shot thing. And you say that because... Hey, I'm not saying I know her. But maybe this particular arsonist has already apologized for what happened and is trying to get her life back together. Uh-huh. And getting arrested right now really wouldn't be serving justice because this arson was just a reaction to a new medication. Look, I could subpoena you, bring you in, and ask you these questions under oath. Steve, I can't tell you any more than I already have. Okay. Uncle Connie. Good night. Don't be a stranger. I am going home to my wife. Oh, I got it. Can I see? Just a sec. Come on out. Let me look at you. No. What do you mean, no? I, I don't want you to see me. What are you talking about? Well, you know, the groom's not supposed to see the bride in the dress before the ceremony. What happened to doing things our way, though, with tradition? I changed my mind. Can you at least tell me how you look? Like... Like a bride. Hey, 
Hey, that pigeon killer you guys caught? Yeah, what about him? The wrong guy. What do you mean he's the wrong guy? He shot a pigeon with a dog gun. We got the weapon and a witness. The ASPCA said that the first pigeon victims, they were shot with a different kind of dart gun. And your guy was in Newark the day the first pigeon was killed. So you're saying that our guy isn't the original pigeon killer? The original pigeon killer is still on the loose. So we caught a copycat. We caught a copycat serial pigeon killer. You found your memo book. Squaw found it. That's great. No, it's not. Now I owe Squaw. Oh. 1085 at 13th and 9th Avenue. All units in the area respond. Disorderly group out of control. Possible off duty cop involved shooting. Central, this is 12. Zebra responding to that crowd control scene on 13th and 9th. What the hell's going on? I'm having lunch with my buddy here at his place. This crazy homeless guy with a drill. He's blocking the service entrance. Delivery truck can't get through. Somebody buddy asked him to move. He says he no. Him, homeless guy says no, you're on my construction site or some psycho babble like that. I come on, I tell him I'm a cop, I say move along. How does this lead to a body on the ground? He makes a move for me with the drill. I tell him to drop it. Brutality! He keeps charging at me with the drill. It's got to be an eight inch bit. I pull up my piece. He's still charging at me, and I had to shoot him. Just get in the car. But he was charging at me. Get in the car, get in the car. Just don't worry, don't worry. Big guy. You get a chance to make your statement. Just shut the hell up for now, okay? Hey, sir. Keep the fuel moving, please. Keep them moving. Everything's great. All right. Whatever Ulrich told you, that's not the way it went down. What the hell are you talking about? Witnesses knew this guy. He was homeless, a little mental, but he's not dangerous. He came after him with a goddamn drill in his hand. He wasn't plugged in. I mean, what's he got, an extension cord? He perceived deadly force, Bruce. He perceived deadly force. Jesus Christ, look at how riled everyone is already. Police the wrong killer! Hey! Mike, come on. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.